Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venoman20 here tonight, and in tonight's video, we're gonna be feeding my small black mamba. If you're a little bit squeamish, no worries. We're actually gonna be feeding him frozen thawed rodents. Uh, this would be no different than you buying meat at the store. These guys are humanely euthanized and are bred entirely for snake food. So without further ado, let's get on into this. All venomous snake handling in this video is performed by a professional. Please don't try anything you're about to see at home. So here we have my little Tanzanian male black mamba, or Dendroaphis polylepis. Uh, in my last video on this snake, I said he was the most feared snake in the world. Uh, here in America, they do a lot of shows on the black mamba, and they always make them out to be a, uh, a real formidable snake, needless to say. So a lot of people do consider these, at least here in America and in Africa, to be a very feared snake. I know in other parts of the world, you guys might not fear them as much. Like in South America, the fertile ants is probably the most feared snake. But as you see, he's doing these little tongue flicks. Those tongue flicks like that aren't really predatory. It's more of a, uh, a sign that he's just a little upset. He's very on edge, and mambas are always on edge. They're just a little, a little shy. But uh, that's one thing that actually makes them quite dangerous is the fact that they're just nervous snakes. So he is locked in on that mouse, moving around a little bit, using the door as a shield, and he grabbed it. Now I want you to notice, mambas typically don't hold on to their prey items. In the wild, if that was a bird, he would bite a hold of it. And then he would let it go and let it fly off a little bit. And then he would actually track it down by the smell. And this is one reason that they're so toxic. Is the fact that they need to be able to drop that bird very quickly. If that bird flies off three miles down the way, he's never going to find that bird. So he needs to drop it almost instantly. Now if this was like a Gaboon Viper or a Bushmaster, it would actually bite and hold on. But a Mamba is not a very heavy bodied snake and they're not overly strong in the aspect of trying to forcefully hold an animal. So they actually typically strike and let go and let the animal die on its own accord, stay up out of the way inside the trees. But this guy, being a captive born and bred specimen, he's never really had to kill anything. He doesn't necessarily understand. And a lot of people's like, well, it's just, it's their nature. You know, they, they don't adapt. They're not that smart. They don't get the hang of it. Well, clearly, right here, something's going on inside his head to where he's like, eh, I don't really need to worry about this little mouse too much. I'll just go ahead and eat him. It'll be okay. But uh, if I don't know if you can see that branch is kind of inside the way, but you can kind of see the lining of the mouth. And that black mamba, the name black mamba, actually comes from the mouth being really jet black. A lot of people think black mob, it's a black snake. Well, as you see, he's kind of a, a olive green, almost. And, and they can be uh, pretty variable in color for the most part. Uh, nothing like, like the variable bush viper or anything like that, but they do vary a little bit. But they actually get that name, like I said, from the lining of the mouth, a lot like the cotton mouth from North America. And just like the cotton mouth, these guys will actually gape when they are feel threatened, they will open up their mouth and be like, you know, look at me, I will bite you, you better back up. And they mean it. Both species does. If you see the inside of the lining of a black mamba's mouth, you probably shouldn't get out of there. Like, that's not a good place to be. This guy doesn't do it very often, even though sometimes he is on edge. Um, he just kind of puffs his neck a little bit, kind of like a cobra. And one interesting fact about these is they actually are a very, very intelligent snake. So a lot of people think that king cobras are very intelligent, and they are. But king cobras and black mambas are actually more closely related than king cobras are to other cobras. So with that being said, they're both two very, very intelligent animals. He's pulling away from the camera. I wish he'd get back down here so we could see him a little bit better. But uh, just a beautiful little animal. I'm, I'm so excited to have this little snake. He's, he's just very interesting. He's climbing a lot more than I thought he would because black mambas, unlike the other species of mambas, are typically more terrestrial than the other species. I would consider them semi-arboreal. They're very good at climbing, but they don't typically do it too much. 
I've noticed as he's digesting rodents, a lot of times he'll go and lay down on the flat surface, you know, down on the, on the bottom of his enclosure. But today he's sitting up on these branches, looking all beautiful. So he's working that down, and we're going to feed him one more rodent. So these are humanely euthanized. I buy them frozen. I know a lot of people would want me to feed him live, but in my first video I actually stated that black mamba bites typically don't hurt. That was a misunderstanding on my part. I actually know a guy that was bit by a black mamba, and he stated that it didn't hurt. What I didn't know is that at the time he was actually on a painkiller. So he didn't necessarily feel too much compared to your average person. So that was a, a mistake on my part. I want to clear that up for you guys. If you get bit, they say it does burn quite a bit. But there is a, a property to the black mamba venom, which can actually be used as a painkiller, or at least uh, the medical science field does believe one day it will be used as a painkiller. They say it's possibly a thousand times stronger than morphine. So that would be great if we could, uh, you know, learn how to utilize that. Because all these people that are in chronic pain and can't walk could really benefit. You know, maybe they could get up and, and move, you know, and uh, get back to a normal life. So that would be pretty incredible. If you see this mouse is dripping a little bit, these mice just came out of their refrigerator. And uh, I actually wanted them to be warm enough for him. I didn't want the cold mouse to lower the body temperature of the snake. So I actually warmed them up in some water. But unlike the Bushmasters or the Rattlesnakes or the Pit Vipers, this is an Elapid. And of course, Elapids don't have heat-seeking pits. So he doesn't use heat to seek out his prey whatsoever. So warming up the mouse doesn't really do much for him. He's very visual and uses that sense of smell. He's trying to work it around to the head. I'm actually surprised that he ate the first one backwards. Snakes typically don't do that. But this is a pretty small prey item. So, he should get it down. You can see them little tiny fangs right at the front of his mouth. Just little tiny. They almost, they're just teeth size. They're really not much bigger than his normal teeth. Very impressive how he flipped that around like that. I'm just really glad he didn't drop it because I actually have eco-earth in the bottom of the enclosure. And that's kind of a dusty, sandy, woody, barky stuff. And uh, that bedding will actually cling to the mouse very well. And it's... Uh, they end up ingesting a lot of it, which typically isn't a problem for a bigger snake. I've seen it be a problem for smaller snakes, but uh, still, I just don't like seeing them eat all that, you know? It's just... Just makes me a little nervous, I guess you'd say. <laughs> the mama don't make me too nervous, but the eco-earth he's eating does. Crazy, I know, right? So these guys are just very, very interesting. They are, like I said, they're a very nervous snake. The bad part is, is if you put them into a corner, if you push them back against the wall, they will lash out much quicker than other snakes. You know, like a monocle cobra will try to get away for a long period of time before he turns around. A mamba, not so much. He pulled it behind that branch, so I had to move the camera over. But uh, he's almost to finish up here. I do appreciate you guys checking out this video. I'm actually working on a Black Mamba t-shirt that'll be out very, here very soon. Uh, I might do a couple other designs, maybe a coffee cup or something like that, or a phone case. If you guys are interested in that, I'll have a link in some of my Teespring. It probably won't be out right when this video is, but it will be out here soon. So I might bring it up again later in the future. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe. I will be posting more videos of the Black Mamba. Uh, no live feedings, but we will do some other stuff with them. I want to get them out and work with them a little bit. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful night. Make sure you share this with your friends. Thanks for watching.